GTI. They're three simple letters and they stand for Gran Turismo or Grand Touring and the Italian word for injection. Now, it's funny to think now, but once upon a time, adding fuel injection to your engine was worthy of adding an eye to the badge. Not so much anymore. Now things might have changed, but one thing's remained the same. Any hot hatch that wears the GTI badge has to be a Swiss army knife on wheels. It has to be capable of doing a lot of things and doing them all well. Now, there might be more pretenders to the throne in 2016 than ever before, but there's one hatchback that started the GTI craze and there'll only ever be one original. And that's it, the Volkswagen Golf GTI. Now, the Golf GTI is an interesting beast. Those who love it worship at the Volkswagen altar without question, while those who hate it drone on about better options and more exciting alternatives. Renaults, Fords, anything at all other than a boring old Golf. Now, despite those arguments, or maybe in spite of those arguments, Volkswagen fans absolutely love these things. Let's try to find out why. And here's your answer as to why people love them so much. When the only criticism you can level at the GTI is that the Golf R is a better car, you're clutching at straws, I've got to tell you. Find a winding road, tight, twisty country road, and you've got every answer you ever need as to why the Golf GTI remains the consummate all-round hot hatch. Adding a limited slip diff and extracting a few extra kilowatts from the engine, which is what happens when you opt for the performance pack, takes an already amazing package and turns it into something even better. Now importantly, Volkswagen have tuned out all of the nasty front wheel drive traits. There's no torque steer, there's no tramp from the front end when you get on the gas coming out of a corner. And you feel like you can drive this car with your fingertips. It's so precise and all of the inputs are just absolutely perfect. The brake feels incredible when you really stand on them coming into a corner. You've got no torque steer when you leave the corner when you get on the gas and the feel from the front tyres, the grip, is just incredible and that limited slip diff is really integral in that. And what you've got to remember when you're driving a GTI like this is that an hour ago you were crawling through traffic with five people on board and now you're slicing through a country road. It's fantastic. Adaptive chassis control consists of electrically controlled dampers which can be switched between four modes, normal, comfort, sport and individual. You could argue that Volkswagen's made this particular GTI a little softer than the harder edged versions that came before it and in fact that's a line that some of the critics like to use but there's an important point with that. That makes it a better daily driver and let's face it whether we want to admit it or not that's what we spend most of our time doing. Now people who don't like the Golf GTI criticise it for being bland and boring and they say it's too clinical. They say that it doesn't quite capture the essence of what an interior of a hot hatch should really be. I'd say though that with a mixture of Alcantara and Tartan it's actually classy without being over the top. And if you're in a car purchase for the long haul, how gaudy or try-hard race car do you want your interior to feel anyway? Inside the Golf cabin, you'll find touches of class and build quality that we're used to from Volkswagen, and the ergonomics are as good as you get from any manufacturer. Apple CarPlay is a functional addition that works really well, and it turns the entertainment system into a little bit more of a workstation for drivers who spend long periods of time behind the wheel. There's useful seating in the second row, and there's room in the boot, which means that the Golf has lost none of its day-to-day -day practicality. The performance pack leaves torque unchanged at 350 newton meters, but adds seven kilowatts up to 169 kilowatts, bigger brakes, 340 millimeters front and 310 millimeters rear, a mechanical limited slip diff and 19 inch wheels. The result is a zero to 100 kilometer an hour sprint in 6.4 seconds, and an ADR fuel use of 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The Volkswagen Golf is good, with an exclamation mark, is hardly a headline-worthy comment. But see, here's the thing. It is good. It's very good. And you can tell that Volkswagen has had generations to refine this package and get it to right where it is now. There might be marginally better hot hatches on the market these days, but the Volkswagen Golf GTI remains the absolute best all-rounder. And isn't that the point?